So the purpose of this video is to give you information so that you can fill out the systematics lab report. So here are six goals that you're going to examine. We have our pica here, our beaver here, red fox, chimpanzee, human, and white-tailed deer. Now what I'm going to cover then is information in, on page six of your lab manual under procedure one, where what your assignment is is to go through all of these different characters and determine whether the um, organism has the character or not. So what I want to do is go through the actual characters here. Okay. So the first character you'll be examining is presence or absence of um, incisors. So here are incisors right here. Okay, these are our canines. Then we have our premolars and molars to the side. All right. Um, another thing you're going to be looking at then is whether or not the eyes face forward. When we're talking about the eyes facing forward, we're talking about an adaptation for our boreal um, habitats, so basically tree dwelling. The purpose for eyes facing forward is triangulation, which is depth perception. So here we have a plane that is perfectly straight where these eyes are facing forward. Okay, only if we have this plane in the front, this plane in the front where eyes are facing forward, does that count for eyes facing forward. Okay, another character you'll be looking at is something called a diastema. So when the teeth are together, that's when we're looking for this gap in the teeth. There is no gap on this individual. But if we look at this individual, then we have this huge gap in between. So this is a diastema, and that's one of the characters. No canines, and our premolars are gone. Another character, this one's tough, is permanently growing incisors. So here's our beaver. Our beaver has incisors. These incisors are interesting because you have enamel on the front, and then these basically wear down through time. So when a beaver chews, the incisors basically wear down. You can see that the enamel on the front is hard so that you have these nice chisel shapes on the beaver's um, incisors. So these are permanently growing incisors in the beaver. The other one that has permanently growing incisors is the pica right here, okay? Now the pica is very interesting because the pica um, doesn't have the enamel on the front, but if we look at the teeth here, we can see that it has two incisors here, but it also has these two little itty bitty incisors in the back. And that's a characteristic of a rabbit. So if I look at any skull, I know it's a rabbit because of those two extra incisors in the back being the four incisors. Finally, then we want to look at the frame of magnum. So back here then is where the frame of magnum hole is on the beaver. The beaver's frame of magnum exits out the back. It's not underneath, it's not at an angle. Right. And if we look at our chimpanzee here, we can see that our chimpanzee is exiting more downward. So it's not out the back. So to be out the back, it's got to be back here, like our beaver head um, on that skull. Now I'm going to give you a view of each skull one at a time so that you can see. So here's our white-tailed deer. Right. We can see up here at the front. Okay, there's the upper part of the jaw right there. All right, then we can look back at the frame and magnum. Okay, definitely out the back. And we can look at these eyes. So we have an eye on this side and an eye on that side. Here's our human. All right, we have our eyes right here, nice plane. We have our frame and magnum, definitely out the bottom. And we look at our teeth. We can see that, right, here's our incisors up here, canine right there, and there's the molars right there. And we have two sets of teeth, so they're not permanently growing. Chimpanzee then, right, you can see the front, incisors, canines, no gap. You can see the eyes, and there is our frame and magnum. Here is our beaver. Okay. We have our permanently growing incisors. There's that. All right. This is there. And here are our eyes on the top. Our red fox. All right. There's the incisors. A lot of them. Canines. 
no gap. There's our frame and magnum. And not a plane, eyes on the side. Finally, our pica. Here's our pica. Remember, it had our permanently growing incisors, an extra pair of incisors there, so four incisors if you can't see. And we can see that gap. Eyes are on top. And there's our frame and magnum there. So finally, we'll just have a quick discussion on what are called analogous versus homologous characters. Okay. Now for systematics and for making phylogenetic trees, homologous characters are sought because they represent divergent evolution versus analogous characters which are bad for phylogenetic trees because they represent convergent evolution. So as an example, if I look at any of these skulls, we can pretty much just look at the dentition and tell what the animal eats. For example, here we have um, canines. All of our molars are ripping and shredding. Okay, so with those canines ripping and shredding, this basically eats flesh. So this is a flesh eater, so this is um, mainly strictly a carnivore. If we look at this individual here, it has no upper incisors at all, so it's just going to clip. And then we have all this grinding and tearing. So this is basically a leaf eater. This is an herbivore. Okay, it has this big diastema, so we don't need the incisors for grabbing that meat and ripping and shredding it. And then we're grinding back here, so definitely an herbivore. Right here, it has all the teeth. It has incisors, canine. If we look at these, pretty flat on the back, but with some uh, cusps on there for ripping and shredding. So this individual is an omnivore. Okay, it eats everything. Here is us. We have our incisors. We have um, canines. We have kind of grinding here. So we are omnivores. Clip, grind, can eat both. This guy here then, right? Mainly grinding here, grinding here. Clips right here, so this guy is a little seed eater. It's an herbivore as well, clipping and grinding. Okay, so another herbivore. And here the beaver, we can see what the beaver eats. Right, the beaver eats um, leaves and things off of trees and also the inner cambium layer off of the bark. And so the beaver again is going to cut grind, and this one really grinds, so it has a um, very fibrous diet in there, and it's grainy. So if we can basically take any skull, and from that skull determine what that individual eats, then the actual diet itself is what's driving the dentition, not necessarily um, divergent evolution.